Hey guys, I'm Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to Sans Diversity. I'm probably butchering that. I hope I'm not. Uh, is uh, Ronnie Kenton's reverse blade kind of any good? Now, the reason I want to react to this is because if you guys know what Ronnie Kenton is, which I'm assuming you do because you're watching this video, uh, it is one of, it is one of, if not the best sword anime like ever. I absolutely I love Ronnie Kenton. It was one of my favorite anime. It was one of the first anime that I ever watched, like, all the way completely through. I absolutely fell in love with the characters and the story. And real quick, it's pretty reverse blade. It's just a side. It's a reverse blade was just, like, a blunt end to it instead of a serpent. And the way just the, the sword fights and the shows and the character, like, ah, it was just such a good soul, man. It's definitely my favorite sword anime. The second one comes behind that is Afro Samurai, but I absolutely love Running Kenton. So, when I saw this, is this for first play any good? Because I remember when I first watched the first episodes, I was like, what the, like, even like what all the characters say, like, what, what is, what gives a reverse blade to a samurai? But you can see he actually was pretty deadly with that reverse blade. So I'm interested. I'm assuming this guy is a sword expert. So I'm interested to see what his take. Excuse me, guys. What his take is going to be on it. But let's get into it. What on earth is this? I'm wearing a Japanese sword while also wearing a European gambeson. Cultures colliding. Cultural appropriation. Our heads are going to explode. <laughs> oh my God. Shadowverse. Oh, Shadowverse. Okay. Ratings, I'm Shad, and in this episode Shad. of Pop Culture Weapons Analyze, I want to look at a, an iconic weapon in anime. Now, I have a soft spot in my heart for anime because I used to be a full-on weeb. I loved it massively when I was much younger, admittedly. Don't watch nearly as much nowadays, of course, so it has you to should. be particularly good to catch my interest. Yet there is one anime there are a lot that going out there. I can still watch and enjoy, I know. even with many of the kind of humorous mistakes and errors and all these other things, but that is the classic anime anime Roni Kenshin or also known as Samurai X. It's actually a really heartwarming redemption story. It really and is. Yeah. Honestly, the, I the love movies, it. Uh, Samurai X movie, the, there's movies which are really good. Samurai X. One of the, the first few is Roni Kenshin with kind of sub subtitle shadow. I want to say the Roni Kenshin live action movies are some of the real like actual good live action anime movies that aren't shitty. <laughs> uh, Samurai X, Roni Kenshin Samurai X. And then there's a movie afterwards, uh, Samurai X as well, but there's like Trust, Betrayal, and I forget the last one because it's been a while. Great animation, and I mean, check out this. Now, of course, it's fantasy sword fighting, okay? And this is one of the interesting things that I think actually has given rise to some of the mythology around the katana. And I know I'm getting distracted because this episode is going to be an in-depth review of Kenshin's reverse bladed sword katana the sakabato which is i think just japanese for reverse blade of sword but it's a it's a, essentially a katana <laughs> this is in his backyard on the back edge so we'll look at that but the thing is what i find interesting oh sorry i have to do the the the, the uh, proper japanese uh, way of sheathing the katana i was very poorly done i oh, know i anyway, <laughs> one of the things that i find interesting with I just wasn't there. stuff like that is that of course, with any fantasy adventure kind of story, you want the swordsmen to be better than ever and the swords to do incredible superhuman of things. Of course. But in the context of the show, the swords aren't magic or enchanted. When you look at the fantasy interpretations of European fantasy, when a sword does something supernatural, it's because it's naturally magical or something is made out of a magical material. But with the katana, the context of the show is that these are just normal swords, okay? And then they're what doing incredible things like chopping stone skill and half, <laughs> no, right? and half, stuff like that. And so so the people who get overly invested in these shows, I actually feel sometimes, especially when you're young, okay? When you're young, you can kind of understand this, this misunderstanding is that swords, the, the, these katanas, they can just chop through anything when no yeah, they reality, can't. it's a sword, okay? A sharpened bit of metal. The katana has strengths in cutting particularly, but it's not the best one and it's not the only one that is so good at cutting. Look at the falchion, look at the tolwa, look at the mesa, okay? Really I have no idea what swords are. Cutters, and they fall in the same kind of category as the katana, because the katana is particularly good at cutting. It's their strengths and weaknesses. What are some of the weaknesses with the katana? Well, it doesn't have nearly as much reach as other swords. This is a one-handed arming sword, European, and uh, look at the blade lengths, okay? We are... They're, they're the same. Same blade <laughs> lengths, okay? But the katana is a two-handed weapon. This is one-handed. And if you want to so compare two-handed two long swords, have a look at the blade 
distance or by length right there. Damn. Okay. So, so that's a bit and one of the other weaknesses, less hand protection with the katana. So I'm gonna say it isn't a great sword or a beautiful sword. It is. And it has katana is a great sword. Cutting, but it's not the best sword in the world. It has weaknesses as well, just like every other sword. Like this sword, nowhere near as good as cutting as this one. But you can get heftier long swords that are built for cutting. This is like a thrusting beast. Okay. Still effective at cutting or effective enough. And this is coming from several reviews I've looked up. But anyway, those are just some brief, almost necessary caveats I need to mention whenever the katana is brought up in any context because there is so much overpraise for the katana and over hate for it as well. I've got an entire series on the katana, five part series going in depth, how they're made and everything like that. So if you want my in depth views on it, check out those I'm videos. Right. If you guys want me to check it out, compared, the katana, listen down, down, let me know down below. The katana versus long sword. Do you see my head glowing right here? This is what happens when the sun comes out after you adjust the brightness levels on your camera. It'll change halfway through. Get ready for a jarring jump cut. So now let's go into this anime kind of adaptation on the katana. Roni Kenshin's or Kenshin Humura's reverse bladed sword. So the in the context of this series, Kenshin was he was the most deadly, insane sword fight in the world because he had learned that one of the greatest sword fighting techniques of all time, the Heaten Mitsurugi. Now, of course, deadly this is boy. fantasy, pop that. culture, stuff like that, because like uh, in the context with the show, Heaten Mitsurugi has certain moves in the, like, part of it is that there's a lot of attacking Kenshin attacks while drawing it, you know, Iyajutsu, Aido, and it's also insanely fast. It's like one of the fastest sword fighting styles yeah. of all time. That, that, that's fantasy. His like, master uh, is a speed beast, really bro. comes down to the type of weapon you're using, and the katana is not the fastest weapon in the world, by the way. It's actually on the heavy end of the spectrum for its size, and so it's the type of weapon and the individual using it that will give you speed. And uh, then there are, like, super insane, legendary maneuvers that the Hiten Mitsurugi has a part of it, which makes it almost the unbeatable sword fighting technique. There's the Ryokuzen, and I forget which one that was specifically. It's either the one it's where- It's been a minute since I watched Rory Oh, so I don't remember everything. But then there's the ultimate, super, almost light speed drawing <sighs> attack called the Amakaka no Ryu no Hidemeki. I really enjoyed the show. He said that pretty well. He said he said that pretty well. But anyway, so it sounded pretty good. The swords in all the world, and during the Meiji Revolution, no, because it was the Again, history, anime, it's been a long time. Meiji Revolution. Mm -hmm. So Roni Kenshin is based in historical period in Japan, and he was fighting to kind of uh, reinstate the Japanese emperor, overthrow the shogunate. I know there's going to be so many people correcting me in the comments. I know, right? Anyway, <laughs> I feel like you, because I don't remember. People, like, almost millions. It's been like and years. In the context of the show, one of the greater, you know, reasons why the revolution the war, was successful, yeah, because like, Kosai, the manslayer, was just this insane killer. He was a monster, bro. He was a monster. He takes a vow to never kill again. Which was okay? stupid. But he has no. this incredible <laughs> sword skill. Like, he's the greatest swordsman who's ever lived. And Besides so, his master, who is of, the greatest swordsman in the soul. This is kind of weird, but I, 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 I get it, is that he is given a sword because he is struggling, and you find this out in the anime. He's given a sword that has a blade on the reverse edge. Now, this is weird because some, like, I... Again, it's been a while, but I do, you know, remember some people saying that you can't kill with this sword. Well, obviously you can. You just turn the blade yeah, and exactly. forward. And he uses the blade on his reverse blade sword in cutting. I think I made that was like good in the video. It does have a like blade in like it. Pillars of stone and stuff with the reverse edge. And so I want to talk about how effective having a sword with an inverse curve like this, how effective it would be. Because guess what? They actually existed. Sorry about that, guy, but... This is really interesting. I like his sword knives. I like his personality. It's very dope. I like the fact that he did watch the show. And he actually is a fan of it. And because, like you said, like, you know, at the end of the day, as much as I pray for cancer, like I said, I'm pretty sure when I was as a kid, like, everything was amazing. The sword was cool. But it's like, I was like, yeah, probably some of that isn't proper technique or the right way. It's like, I don't know. I'm not a swordsman expert. So he'll explain it. But he's doing a good job so far. Because guess what? They actually existed. Blades, swords, like, Kenshin Humora's Batosai the Manslayer Samurai X's reverse bladed Sakabato, Sakabatu, Sakabato, anyway, actually existed. Not in katanas, and they were in different historical periods, so I'll talk about that. But it's implied that because it has a blade on the back edge, you can't kill anyone because the best moves that uh, the Hiten Mitsurugi, you know, employs requires a you know a curved blade like this, particularly because so much of you know the uh, Aha! Uh -huh. So much of the attacks <laughs> on the Hitomitsurugi is, you know, drawing attacks and stuff. And 
yes, okay, don't, like, I'm not trying. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's those people who's like, Shane, you can't do me, I know you've never done it before. That was a crappy <laughs> short I wasn't even trying it, of course I'm crap, because it's not a style that I've trained in. <laughs> okay, so trying to draw the sword and attack in one motion with the blade being on the reverse edge, and so this is me holding, it's like, it's doable, actually. How doable is that? I, I, I need to double check that because that was actually far easier than I was expecting. So if I was trying, so curve, see the curve? I'm grabbing it on the reverse edge if regularly, you'd have to do it like that. Okay, so now, drawing and attacking in one motion. This actually wasn't that hard. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> jarring jump cut. <laughs> That has an effect on you. So, interestingly, <laughs> a lot of What's the my job uh, that, big finisher moves for the Hiten Tsurugi is based around the drawing technique. And I think you'd be able to do that with the, you know, blade on the reverse edge just as well and strike with the blade and then do big cuts. And so the idea that, you know, you can't kill anyone with a sword where the blade is on the back edge doesn't really work. There's a bit of a flaw in logic with that. But having said that, I actually feel the blade being on the back edge is there. So like, almost like it's a test of Kenshin's true penitence. Okay? Yep. Is he really sorry for what he did? Because yep. there are many situations where, in all honesty, the, the people he's fighting deserve to be killed, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. They need to be taken out. It's kind of the whole Batman Joker thing, all right? If Batman just killed the Joker, but he first defeated the Joker, he would have saved... I say all the time, I love Batman. He's one of my he's my favorite comic character, one of my favorite characters in fiction, my favorite superhero. The Joker needs to die. I said this multiple times before. I respect Batman for him wanting to say I know it's not a Batman, here, but like he, he brought up Batman, so I'm gonna talk about it. I respect Batman for wanting to save people. I respect Batman for believing everybody deserves a chance to change and they can have an infinite number of second chances, I guess. However, someone like the Joker who is not on, you couldn't even say incapable of change, but he does not want to change. He enjoys what he's doing. Sorry, that's me some game, but he's enjoying what he's doing. He's not trying to be a good guy. He's not trying to, you know, change his way. He wants to be the way he is. Some like him deserves to die. And there were characters like that in the show that I agree with that told side the man said so he came out and did what his name said he does. And slayed them dudes because like there were plenty of characters that so deserve to die. Heaps of lives later on. Yet the killing that Kenshin has done has emotionally scarred him so deeply that I th it seems like it would have a greater psychological impact. If he ever killed again, he feels he would revert back into the manslayer to and the become beast. a unstoppable slaughter machine again. And he doesn't want that to happen. He feels that he killed unjustly during the war. Now, in a war, I feel things are different. Yep, but I from agree. the character's perspective, he thinks they're murders, okay? And by reverting back to that former self, he'll just kill everyone. Because it's so war. Even killing the bad guys is too much. He won't kill a single soul because he feels that will happen to him. And so it seems like as a true test of his sincerity, he has ha he has a sword which has the ability to kill still, okay? Well, in actual fact, it has the ability to kill even when he strikes people on the blunt edge. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you go. TV show. You go crack has somebody's neck. Kill with a blade. <laughs> And all he has to do is reverse it. And there are times where he comes so close, where he gets so angry with the murder and bloodshed he's seeing that he wants to punish these people. And he kind of does the big, he's holding it, oh, no, he's holding it, he's getting killed. But those moves were awesome though, when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that temptation is always present. And I think that's those why were awesome. have the blade on the back edge. Those really, moments of like you, the man slayer coming out were incredible. Just have a blunt sword with no edge on it at all. Exactly. You still kill people, but it'll be far exactly. more difficult to do so. So then how effective I mean, not really if you were strong enough. Sakabatu when he throws it around the wrong way. Well, it's funny, wrong way, right way with the blade on the back edge. Well, it's funny when I say blade on the back edge, uh, it, I actually don't really consider it being on the back edge because there are swords that have inverse curves. So really it's just an inverse curved katana, essentially. But for a katana, they don't have inverse curves. So that's why it's a reverse one. I get that, okay. But what is this sword that has an inverse curve? Well, look at the Dushian Falks. And I'm mm. probably butchering the pronunciation. I love as all always, these swords. <laughs> but okay, so a Falks, reverse 
bladed sword. <laughs> Even I said it. <laughs> Inverse bladed sword. And it really does look like this is an adaptation of a farming implement, like a sickle. It does. And just made as a proper weapon. As like, okay, we can use this weapon. Let's make it more weapon like. Let's because usually sickles. Yeah, farmers were dangerous back in the day. Curve. Well, with the Dushian Falks, Dacian Falks. I think it's Dacian. Dacian. With the Dacian Falks, uh, the curves aren't nearly as pronounced, but there's variants. There's ones with wider curves, and there's one with ones with sh as shallow curves as what we kind of see right here. And they are very effective swords. But what's kind of interesting about this idea is that having a normal curve, okay, on a sword is far more common than an inverse curve. They existed. But why is one so significantly more prominent than the other? Well, of course, it comes down to the exact mechanics of what's happening in, in the cut with the type of curve that's on the blade. And it's not to say that the inverse curve is universally worse. There are strengths and weaknesses. I generally feel there's probably more strengths with a regular curve, but with the curve, the standard curve you see on a katana, I've mentioned this many times before, this actually won't increase cutting ratio, or if it does, it's, and I've done tests with this, right? It is so minute that it's, it's not even worth mentioning. What the curve does assist with is with edge alignment, okay? And we can see this by the simple test, okay? If I rest the katana here and let it, uh, oh, I see it does it, sorry. Just let it rest, it naturally rolls into correct edge alignment because of the way that the blade structure is. Mm, interesting, so see, this is so cool. Even So yeah, flat, just let it roll, and look at that correct edge alignment. And so it's well known that the katana has a very interesting property that uh, many sword enthusiasts and experts have attributed to that, and they say it is forgiving in the cut. What does that mean? Hey, have you seen this new Well, it means when you do a cut with a katana and your edge alignment is off. What is edge alignment? It means that the blade, okay, the actual edge, is facing the same angle as the motion of the cut itself, okay? So if I'm cutting and my edge alignment is off and I hit something, the blade can just kind of roll onto the flat and it won't do a thing. But the katana is forgiving when with bad edge alignment. So if you cut something or strike something and the edge alignment is off, because the blade is thicker, therefore stiffer, there's less flex. If you have a thinner blade and it has more flex and, there's, and you hit with bad edge alignment, there's a chance the blade will flex and even bounce off the target. That's not good, you don't want that. The way you fix that is with technique, better edge alignment. But if you do that with a katana, there's a better chance that it will still bite in because it's got more resistance in the flex mm. and because it has this kind of self correcting mechanism because of this slight curve which again corrects bad sword form this is why people who have nearly no experience even just no experience with swords can pick up a katana and chop a tatami mat in two because the katana is actually easier to cut with than other swords this is why it is a good cutter does that mean it will cut as deep as other swords even with swords that aren't as forgiving in the cut no because if you have good technique okay you can cut easily as deep and effectively as what a katana can mm, katana is just more forgiving for bad form and technique. And so that is actually a significant advantage that you get out of even having a very slight curve. Do you get that with an inverse curve? No. In actual fact, the reverse seems to be opposite. Remember how when I put it on there, when I just rest here, it naturally rolls into correct edge alignment? Well, when you do this, it wants to naturally roll out of oh, correct edge oh, alignment, okay. okay? And so that is a weakness is with an inverse curve. When you strike, it can naturally, like when you strike something, it can naturally roll and then roll onto the flat because by the nature of the geometry of the weapon, it wants to roll out of correct edge alignment. Where you fix that, is with a technique, but that is a weakness. But there are advantages with an inverse curve that might, uh, you know, balance it in the other direction to make someone decide, I do want a reverse kind of inverse curve weapon blade. And that is the additional leverage you get in actual cutting, okay? The way we can kind of deconstruct the, what, what the mechanics of what's happening here is by accentuating the actual mechanics itself. And so with an ax, okay, what we're kind of, what I'm comparing here is the point of, that, of leverage that you have at the end of it compared to where you're holding it. Now with a reverse curve, the point where it's ending is kind of where it ends on axe. It's here. So the curve is curving down and so it's there. All right. Now what you'll notice if you grab an axe and just put the tip on anything like that and apply pressure, you'll find that just the way that with you're holding it, you're able to get more pressure and more force on it. But if you reverse this, and so this is where the end point of the sword would be with a regular curve, and you put the tip on something and try and apply force and pressure, you'll notice that you kind of more push yourself down and it's harder to so get the pressure so and push more, it yeah, in right. as, uh, as much as so it's kind of like it's fighting you back. Like this. And so what we're seeing here is the position, okay, the, of the force 
cost compared to your leverage point. And so with a regular curve, the leverage point is underneath where you're applying the pressure, and so the natural indication is to get pushed down as a result, which you lose some of the energy and force with your, the, 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 the leverage point just getting knocked down. But if you suddenly reverse it, okay, suddenly the point of leverage is situated in a more direct line behind the tip, the connecting point, and so you can exert more pressure. And this applies as well when you go to cut. You get that additional leverage to apply more force. Mm -hmm. So there's an advantage there. You can actually- I'm I keep running over the same in my head. Curve, but there are problems. The main one being is that it wants to roll out of correct edge alignment. But there's another advantage with the curve, and it doesn't exist with one that's as so shallow as this, and that is in cutting, okay? The actual cutting slicing ratio. With a curve as shallow as this, this is just like barely off straight, okay? You don't get an increase in cutting ratio. But if you had a more pronounced curve, which exists on other swords, like the Tolwa, which falls within the kind of classic scimitar family, well, that means when you actually strike, cut something, that more of the edge comes in contact with the target that you're cutting, and it slices, it actually cuts more. It's a slicing cut or a draw cut, which is more effective than just a standard flat static hack. Now I've actually compared this, okay? I've made 3D models looking at the cutting ratio of the, guitar, the standard curve of the standard katana, mm -hmm. and the cutting ratio, uh, the, the increase is basically nothing, okay? It doesn't increase cutting effectiveness, so, but it has other okay. advantages with the curve, just not cutting ratio, which some people, many people in fact, attribute it to when they try and extol the virtues of the katana. The next advantage with having an inverse curve is where the uh, part of the blade hits first, which part hits first, and usually it will be the tip, especially with ones that have uh, even a, a slightly more pronounced curve, and especially ones that have a more pronounced curve, a heavily one, when you strike with something, the tip is the thing that will usually hit first, and that has greater penetrative power, right? That'll really dig in. And now the sun has gone away, and it's all, it's too dark, or... Oh, well, we'll just have to fix it in post or something. But yet there is another disadvantage with this, and it's the fact that the tip, when you're trying to, once that you connect with the target and you strike and you want to follow through, because of the inverse curve, there's higher chance that your blade can get stuck in whatever you're cutting, especially if you come in contact with bone or something solid, okay? You can actually get stuck and you have trouble with drawing your blade, and if your blade gets locked away, that's not good, okay, that's almost instant death. Like, <laughs> if you tried to cut a gambit and you didn't get through it and then you got caught on the layers and you're and there, you'd have to kind of pull it back. It's not to say it would get jammed in there, but it just means that the motion of the cut can be stalled and you have to reverse to pull it out and you can't do a full sweeping through. With a regular curve that you see here, that will basically never happen because you can just slice it, draw it through the uh, target. So when you hit, you just slice it and draw it through and it'll come all the way. And that's kind of one of the main techniques in which the katana is used, okay? Big draw cut slicing all the way through, okay? Now, the thing is, you can do these slicing draw cuts with a straight blade because the katana barely has a curve where you strike and just draw it through okay and because there's no inverse curve the tip isn't going to get stuck there's so, so much information the that, he's that exists with an inverse curve does not exist with a katana that has a slight curve and even swords that have no curve at all just straight and so in my opinion i feel there's more detrimental elements with a, a inverse curve sword like the dacian falx compared to a regular curve one but there's some advantages so it's not to say they're completely ineffective they're, they're pretty so they don't, so they don't completely weapons. suck. And but... Kenshin's reverse bladed sword falls into that regard as well. It would cut really effectively. And because yeah, Kenshin he, he is kill a master, you one hit. the problem with it falling out of edge alignment wouldn't be an issue. He should be so perfectly good with edge alignment yeah, that in actual fact, he probably wouldn't even need the katana's curve to assist with it. He would actually get more advantages out of a straight bladed katana than a curved one. And yes, I know the curve is on the katana because of the quenching process, but that doesn't mean that's a quality that is, you know, unavoidable with a katana. The way you make a straight katana while di with differential hardening is actually forge the blade with an inverse curve. And then when you quench it, because when you quench it, there is more clay on the back than on the front. So that means the back end cools down slower and so the blade will actually curve forward a bit and then it gets bent back pulled back into this curve in the quench because there's more mass on the back of the blade and it's cooling down slower and so that's where the natural curve comes from in the quench and like I was saying you can inverse curve the uh, starting point so when it naturally pulls back in the quench it'll pull back into a straight position so you can have straight katanas that are differentially hardened the idea that's impossible is wrong so yes Kenshin Homura Sakabato 
It's an effective weapon, absolutely, okay? And it's a fun, enjoyable anime as well. These are my thoughts, analysis, and breakdown. Hope you've enjoyed, and of course, I hope to see you again. So until then, farewell. Oh. All right, guys, I'm still feeling right there. Sorry if I wasn't like in the talk, but he was just giving so much information. I was just very interested about the way he talked about the blade and the color potential and the different points and everything. Like, it, it's interesting, because you know, as a novice, people are people who just watch anime, and we just see cool sword fighting or even in movies and stuff or live action like The Witcher or something. You're just thinking, oh, cool sword fighting. You're not really thinking about all the stuff that really comes with a blade and the know-how. You're just like, oh, I just picked this up. I can just cut everybody. I can just cut everybody. But you're not thinking about all the things that go into this. Like, you know, the, the way of the blade, how the blade is, the technique, the proper way to wield the blade. Like, there's so much that goes into it. And just watching that, and just watching that, uh, to me, was like, it was crazy. Like, he, he offered so much. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't, make sure to subscribe and share, guys. There'll be a link in the description to read the video as well as the rest of the channel. Please go support him. You can follow him on social media. There'll be a link in the description as well. Please do so. You guys can request you want to react to on there or even more. If you guys like this, if you guys like this, like I said, I know it wasn't probably the most entertaining thing. But if you like this, you like seeing me, like, Look at different blade history and stuff like that. Let me make let me know your thoughts on the comment section. What do you guys uh what do you ever just to react to by him or anybody else? Also, what do you think about the Akana, the Akana, and what do you think about Ronin Kenshin if you ever watch the series? Uh let me know if there's any like sword fanatics out there besides him. But it's I crack some out. Peace.